What's up, dude? Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today we'll be talking about something that's definitely crime related. It's not like a murder or anything. Honestly, I don't even really know how to preface it other than it's absolutely wild. So let's jump into it. John Carat was a widely known fertility doctor in the Netherlands between the 1980s to the 2000s. Artificial insemination wasn't a regulated procedure in the Netherlands when it was first offered. It took place in back rooms, said Hying Brons, Eneritus pro <laughs> Professor of Gyne Gynecology, and it was restricted to a limited number of clinics. If you failed to conceive as a couple, you weren't going to publicize it. Infertility in men was perceived as shameful. During the early years of artificial insemination being offered, people thought that it should only be offered to straight couples. However, Jan was willing to work with lesbian couples as well as single mothers. In that sense, he was ahead of his time, said Bronze. He was a pioneer in the field of donor insemination. I think he started doing it from a sense of idealism. Jan seemed like a sensitive idealist, a sensitive man who had started a clinic from idealist motives, said Diana, who was a former patient. However, it came out decades later that Jan had regularly used his own sperm when he was supposed to be using a sperm donor's. The patients he did this with were given extensive profiles about the anonymous don donors that they thought they were using, or told that their husband's DNA was being used, but that unfortunately was typically a lie. Jan has since passed away in 2007, so a lot of what I'm about to read you um, happens after his death. In 2019, a group of people who were conceived from Jan Jan's clinic had to win the right to have their DNA tested against his. Of that group, 49 were confirmed to be his kids. Jan had actually admitted that he fathered 22 kids. Some speculate that he might have fathered as many as 2,000 kids. Now we're going to talk about just some of his patients, not all of them, but just a few different ones that are vastly different from one another, and I just think that it would be really helpful if their story got out even just a little bit more. Yvonne had always wanted a big family, so she was hopeful when she went to see Jan. You felt he- oh, and my light died. Yep, she's dead. Alright, well, we'll carry on. You felt he really wanted you to have your child. He was a bit on the chummy side. S no worries, we're gonna fix this. Jan let her know that they could treat her with her husband's DNA. However, that's not what he did. I was doubly cheated. It's as if my husband never existed, she said. I don't want to know that Jan passed on genes to Joey. The very thought of Jan gives me the shivers. Joey is not a carbot. My husband and his father. I don't want to meet any of Joey's half-brothers or sisters. His brothers and sisters live in our home. It's called the family. I fully understand how, or not I fully understand, but I, I get how you would feel that way. That makes total sense. And I don't think any of their feelings about this situation um, should be invalidated. Anne Meek was a symbol, a symbol? She was a single patient of Jan's. During one of the early inseminations, the first or second time, I was lying on the stretcher when Dr. Carbot said to me, many a woman in her 30s would be jealous of the way you look, if you look like that on the inside too. Well, after Anne Meek had her daughter, Jan asked that sh she send him a birth announcement and he wanted to see the baby. That's when he asked if he could take her photograph. He thought she was a beautiful baby, she said, but looking back at it now, I see it in a different light. Those photos were like his trophies. This is my work. Behold these trophies. Absolutely disgusting. I was helped there as a lesbian, said Tanya. My partner at the time was pregnant. We said, wouldn't it be great if they could be born at the same time? I knew at once that this was what I wanted. Carbat was so rough about it that I asked him if someone else would do it, she said. When he had inseminated me, I would be bleeding afterwards. It took her three years to become pregnant. Tanya had a hard time with how long it was taking her to get pregnant, thinking that maybe it was something wrong with her. I did have my doubts. I wonder if Carbat had used his own sperm when he said, now you're pregnant. Very gross, honestly. Anonymous patient one remembered how Jan would make strange comments. Looking nice down there. Things like that a lot, she said. That was for starters when he inserted the speculum. Then he wanted to touch my breasts. I held him off like this. Hands off. Or 
he would say I was hot. And he rubbed the inside of my thighs upwards. And he said, which was worst of all, I bet I'm much better than your husband. That was the very worst comment. The next time I was so nervous that I threw up in the waiting room. It was so terrible, but I had no choice. This went on for 16 months, five times a month. I was afraid to say anything. Lydia said that Jan told her he found her an anonymous donor who looked like her husband. It sounded like a fairy tale, she said, so that's what I chose. I thought he was a creep, she recalled. The way he looked at you was creepy, the way he talked, the way he behaved. She had a few other options offered to her, but she decided to go with Jan in the end. However, unfortunately, decades later, her son called her in tears, saying, I'm Carbot's son. I didn't ask for Carbot's semen, she said. The idea that I was lying there and he was jerking off next door, the mere thought of it, I felt dirty, so dirty. It's unbelievable. I'm glad my husband didn't live to see this. He would have died of cardiac arrest instead of cancer. Hank and his wife went to Jan when they discovered that he was infertile. Now remember around this time that was like shameful for a man. It's definitely nothing to be ashamed of, but you know, different time I guess. So, you know, everyone's feelings are validated. They planned on keeping the artificial insemination a secret. My wife and I had agreed to keep it a secret to the world, but we would tell the children at an appropriate age. After they had their first son, the couple decided to go back to Jan and try for another one. My wife was fairly quick in saying, I think he does it himself, Hank recalled. When he came for our second child, when we came for our second child, we noticed people in the waiting room with the same kind of blonde hair as Martin. I think that's how you pronounce his name, their son. So we thought that they might as well be Martin's sibling. My main grudge against Carbot is that Martin and Ivo are not full brothers as I would have liked, said Hank. Those are just a few of many patients that Dr. Jan helped. All these stories, they genuinely are so sad because they're so different. Like we heard from a single mother, a lesbian parent, um, a husband and wife who could not get pregnant. And they all kind of came away with the same story in a way. It's so gross and I can't believe that creeps like him are gynecologists. This is disgusting, but I thought that it was very interesting. And there is a documentary about it. I can't remember what the name of it is, but I'll have it in the description box down below. But that is it for me today. If you guys found this video interesting, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.